has been raining the entire night and morning. And I've just been so exhausted. I just don't want to move. I don't want, it's starting to get quite wet. I don't think I'll get stuck in here in the mud or anything. But I was thinking I can like shower. I'm trying to think of when the last time I showered was use the water to my advantage. It's just one of those days where it's like if I were at a normal home, you know, I just lay in bed. You can't really do that out here in the wilderness. <laughs> like, there's always a reason you have to like move somewhere or do something. Or, you know, I don't, I don't have any food either, so I have to go into town to get food. And, it's just so gloomy today. I can't concentrate, so I really have to be. I'm so tired of like trying to like I have to get out. And it's, it's just been raining the whole night to like try to pee in the rain. And I'm not complaining. I'm complaining. I'm always complaining. Oh god. <sighs> I just washed myself in a mud puddle. It wasn't even like it was mud. I don't even care. Like a wash is a wash. <laughs> it's like crouching down, just like. Shaving a little fast. That wakes you right up. Cold water. New developments. Let me show you. I'm really excited about this one because you just never know what it is. It's just like a puzzle, a little mystery. I don't want to be stuck in Idaho. This is turned on today. I just got done working out. I'm trying to get to Colorado, which is like an 11 hour drive. I'm going to have to sell Yuki. I'm going to figure out what the check engine light is tomorrow whenever shops are open, like a auto parts store, just to see the code. I'm hoping it's not something serious, but I think I need to sell Yuki because I can't upkeep it anymore. I don't want to say I'm stressed today because I say I'm stressed every day. It could be something really minor. It's not the gas cap. I had to pull over because She's like not accelerating and now the engine's kind of like tsh, and the engine's dying. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What do I do? It's Sunday, nothing's open. I have nowhere to stay. There's, an, I can't afford the hotels here. They're like over $200. Oh. I don't want to make videos about my Jeep breaking down anymore. Like, okay, we already had a couple of videos about that. It's getting boring. I'm at this hotel now. I had to get a hotel for two nights. I had to get it towed here because there's nothing open. I couldn't go anywhere. Uh, it broke down in town. I couldn't drive it anywhere. Today, it's Monday, I called every mechanic around here and they're all booked up. So I had to get the Jeep towed to a different town to a mechanic that said they could get me in today or tomorrow. So I got it towed there and, and I called the garage and they haven't told me if it got there safely or anything. Like it has all my stuff in it. It's just so expensive here. Like this place, like this would be so much less stressful if I could get like a 50, even 70, $80 a night hotel. But I'm paying three times that much here, needlessly. Because there's, n there's nothing, there's no hotels around that I could stay at and I can't stay in the street, you know. I like, probably I might have to tomorrow because I can't afford another one of these hotels. It's 150 to $200 a night. And I've never paid that much in a hotel before because it's a touristy town. These things have been happening too much. I really hope it's an easy fix. If anything, you guys can look at this and be like, well, at least I'm not her <laughs> right now. I was telling my mom about it. I'm like, I don't know the silver lining. I don't know, like... She's like, well, people like to watch people struggle and just know that their life's not so bad. And I'm like, that's, that's good. That's good. So that's the silver lining here. There comes a point where it's like, if you overdraw your bank account and you really can't afford anything anymore, like I would be completely stranded. And I'm getting close to that point. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I just got a call like a minute ago and I'm so excited. <sighs> It was just some wires that were rubbing against the something or other on the ground and they just, they repaired the wires. There's some sensors and stuff. <laughs> I've never been so happy for like broken wires. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so relieved. But I'm gonna go pick her up tomorrow and I'm gonna drive to Colorado. <laughs> I don't want to get another hotel. I can't believe. <gasps> I knew it was something electrical. I knew it. <laughs>
because I've been so preoccupied with this whole ordeal, I haven't showed you any of Ketchum and the beauty of it. It's absolutely gorgeous here and I'm sad that I didn't get to show you a better time because I had plans to just explore and be out in the nature, but sometimes it doesn't turn out that way. But Ketchum is a beautiful place to go if you have money and you want to see beauty. But we're getting out of here tomorrow. But I cannot say that Ketchum is not beautiful. I'm a happy girl. And I'm not usually happy, so I'm very satisfied right now. <laughs> She's fixed. Uh, the total came out to about $200 to, with the getting all the wires fixed underneath, apparently. They were shorting things out. Um, I have a whole list of the sensors and they fixed the wires and they did it quickly too, which usually I don't have that experience with garages. So let's hope that we do not have to visit another garage on this trip. We're just gonna, we're just gonna move on to Colorado. I'm going to a bus, a converted bus, and I was really looking forward to this and I thought I had to cancel. So I was like contacting the, the host and I'm like, I'm gonna, I might have to cancel, you might have to put it up. Fortunately, we still have enough time to get there and I wanna give you a tour of the place. I'm really fascinated by tiny homes and converted vehicles, converted living situations. So I try to show you guys that whenever I can afford it. Um, this is an affordable Airbnb. Yeah, kind of out in the middle of nowhere in Colorado. It's like actually very close to Moab. I, act, I have to go da back down through Utah. So we're going to Utah again, which is funny because it feels like it's been ages since I've been in Utah, but I have such fondness for Utah that I'm not mad about it. I don't really like Salt Lake City, but we're just driving through. I have, I've been through Colorado, but I've never spent any time there. So I did want to hit Colorado before this adventure ends. And now that Yuki's fixed, I'm like, hey, can I can, maybe I just can continue going. Maybe I don't have to sell her. We'll see how we feel in Colorado because you know it changes every single day. It's my own stress that's stressing me out. She's not had a problem that's not been fixable. She hasn't had a major problem yet. She has some major costs with the tie rods, but I don't even know if those needed replaced. I probably just got ripped off by that garage. Anyways, let's continue on. We have a lot of driving to do today. It's all gonna be all right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, this is so up and down. God. Yeah. Stuck in traffic. Oh, I don't, <laughs> whenever I'm going slow like this, I always have to turn on my heater, even when it's really hot out, because it's just so much sitting that the Jeep just overheats in this environment. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, that's what happens with these types of Jeeps. But slow, slow going. Oh, oh, oh. I'm like a professional rest stop sleeper. I feel like there's not a lot of other people that have slept as many rest stops as I have. I'm not a professional using my camera yet. What do you think I would be? I haven't had any issues sleeping at rest stops like I do. A lot of people would be like, is that kind of sketchy? It's kind of, you don't get the best sleep, but it's free. Oh, I need to back up and then onwards. I this whole routine that I know what I'm doing. Okay, It. That was a very, very long drive. I drove all the way from Ketchum, Idaho, all the way here into Western Colorado, about 10 or 11 hours, plus all the road construction and, and road um, delays. You can made it just fine. I barely did. <laughs> I feel so overheated. All aboard. Got this whole big school bus to ourselves. Oh, it feels so good. So, on these grounds, there is a outdoor solar shower, and then there's I think outhouses somewhere, and I'm gonna have to find those. There's no um, bathrooms in this, but there's a nice desk. There's a stove, stove and firewood, which I will not need. We have a fan. <laughs> Breeze in the hair. Go, go, get out. Okay, get some airflow. <gasps> yes. Oh, this is <laughs> this is like my childhood memories. Woohoo! Out. 
actually like cold showers, so I don't really want to use hot water. This feels very open. might be it. This might be the day that I lose my drone. It's way too windy to fly my drone right now, but I just, I need to get a shot of that gorge. It's gorgeous. It's not that, it's not even that gorgeous. Like I'm going to risk my drone for a mediocre shot, but I just got to do it down there. I drove all the way up here and um, I figure I need to get something. <laughs> I'm at the top of something. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is gonna blow my drone right away. I don't even think it'll lift off in this wind. Damn it, I want a drone shot. <laughs> yeah, I made a terrible, terrible mistake and my drone is lost, it blew away. I'm so disappointed. I don't know what to do. I can't retrieve it. The wind's too strong. That was my fault. Oh, I was so dumb. Horrible, horrible decision. All my fault. Shouldn't have done that. I don't even know if I should go try and go back to get it because it could just be a lost cause. And I have to like drive with the heat on again all the way back down that road. And I don't even know where it could have crashed. And if it's still salvageable. <laughs> I've been trying to find this drone. Battery's completely dead on it. Whenever I was trying to land it, which I had no control over it really, but I was trying to put it in an area where there was, where there was no like main road and um, houses. Girl looks, goes to look for her drone. She also disappears. It's a waste of time and my $400 drone. I know, like you guys would say, you shouldn't have done that. I know I shouldn't have, but there were times where the wind died down. So I thought I could do it real quick, just to get a quick shot. It wasn't even that great. And now I lost all my footage and my drone and there's no way I'm gonna find it in this. Like that was just the coordinates the last time it was connected. It could be anywhere. The wind could have blown it anywhere. It was tiny. Now it's just gonna be lost in this desert forever with, along my SD card. <laughs> I didn't want to come and find it, be my guess. All in day's work. Yep, that's how I do it. men desire wealth and other such things. They no more improve a man's soul than a golden bridle improves a horse. We contaminate ourselves with these externals. Soon, another lapse into unconsciousness will come. I think it will be the last one. It may not seem like a big deal, it's just a drone, but in my life, I don't have a lot of, um, things that I kind of rely on into my technology and my mechanical things are really important to me. And it makes me feel a little like 
a loss. It's gone, and what can I do? I can't do anything about it, so we might just have to go a few videos without any drone shots. And this could be motivation for me to try and save up for a new drone that is better quality and can shoot in vertical, which I've been really, really wanting. After traveling so much and things going wrong and losing money, and I've realized that like everything gets sorted out in the end. Nothing is fatal and even, this is dark or this is deep, even death is just sleep and people make everything so serious. I make things serious, I really do. I will add in some drama here and there just to feel like I'm alive, but nothing is that serious and that can be a great comfort. I always go deep with things like deeper than I should, but if it helps console anyone, these are things that I found in my life. Whatever loss you're experiencing, whether it be your job, a breakup, it's not actually gone. Like even if someone dies, they're not actually gone. They're just recycled. And just because it's not yours anymore, it still exists and everything is ours in the end anyways because we're all part of the same thing. So we never really lose anything. So I'm not above freaking out. I actually do it all the time. <laughs> Need my oatmeal. Mm -hmm. My life sounds so gritty and gross. It's just like, I wouldn't want anyone to see how I actually live. <laughs> I'm just like always like eating out of cups and like, and like washing them with like paper towels and then just like slithering on the floor and stuff. I can't describe it, but. I think, I think converting to school bus is cool, but it's just too big of a conversion. Like, I don't think I'd ever do it. And this was not even fully converted. Like if you did like the full schooly conversion, those are intense. Plus you can never really, you can't really move it too much. I like moving, movement, obviously. That's why I like overlanding and stuff. You just get to move as much as possible. If you're not moving, you're dead. It's insane how cold it gets here at night. Like cold. It's boiling hot during the day and then freezing at night. More so than any other place I've been. It is time for me to leave this bus. I know but now I can leave and I can finally get to Denver where my sibling lives. I'm gonna end this video here. I know in a lot of my content, it's a lot of struggles and it's a lot of things that are anxious and stuff like that. And that's me. And I don't want it to be like that, but it just turns out that way. So, but stick to Terrestrial and I'll see you in the next video.